evidently named after the central figure in the story, Joshua covers 25 to 30 years during the 14th century BC. The transition book between the Torah and the historical section of the Old Testament, it answers historically to Acts, describing Israel's great conquest as Acts describes the church's great commission. It answers experientially to Ephesians, since both explain how war is waged in order to possess your possession. It also answers typically to Hebrews, showing the superiority of our Joshua in leading his people into rest. This Joshua, from the tribe of Ephraim, was Moses' personal servant. He attended faithfully in the tabernacle and was one of only two believing spies who reconnoitered Canaan. He was Israel's commanding officer against Amalek in Exodus 17 and was past his 80th birthday when he led the conquest of the land. As Moses' symbol was the rod, so Joshua's was a spear. There are three major campaigns in the book. First, the Beachhead Campaign, where they established their base camp at Gilgal, then captured Jericho, the largest oasis in the world, and the doorway to the land. They also conquer Ai after an initial rout, and Bethel, since these cities controlled the north-south highway through the hill country of Samaria. This effectively cut the country in half. Following the all-tribal council at Shechem to renew the covenant and the mistaken compact with the Gibeonites, the southern campaign is waged against the five kings of the south at the valley of Ajalon where the sun stood still. The northern campaign at the waters of Merom, north of the Sea of Galilee, is one against the confederacy led by Jabin of Hetzor. The book may be divided into three sections. In part one, we see Israel entering the land, chapters one to five. In part two, they're engaging the enemy in a seven years war, chapters six to 12. In part three, they're establishing their territories, chapters 13 to 24. Or we might say they're going in, battling through, and settling down in the land of Israel. These three divisions answer to the three charges Joshua gave to the people to sanctify themselves for entering in, to separate themselves at the mountains of blessing and cursing, and in chapter 24, at the end of the book, to serve the Lord all their days. In fact, the word serve occurs 14 times in this passage. Why study this book? One, because there's a present possession for God's people. Two, because God's people can be overcomers through faith and obedience. Three, because there are strategies for victory to be learned here. And four, because we must be reminded that God's goal for his people is rest in the joy of a complete victory. Joshua is an invigorating book, as encouraging as the man who lent it his name. It is not, however, without warnings. Recall the humiliating defeat at Ai. The four reasons for failure there are the same today. One, they didn't ask counsel from the Lord. Two, they underestimated the enemy. Three, they had unjudged sin in the camp. And four, they were not united in their efforts. But thank the Lord, the book doesn't end there. Ours is a restoring God. Let's go on to victory. And that's our scripture snapshot of the book of Joshua.